85% of the universe is made of something different than you and me. We call this stuff dark matter because it doesn't emit or absorb light. But what it does do is interact with gravity, just like you and I do. This gravitational interaction can be seen on the scale of individual galaxies. Vera Rubin first detected this when she saw that stars moving around the centers of galaxies like our own were rotating much more quickly than you would have expected if those galaxies were only made of the stuff we can see. We can also detect this all the way from the smallest galaxies to the largest galaxy clusters. And how much matter there is actually impacts how the universe evolves as a whole, how rapidly it expands or slows down, and how quickly things come together under the influence of gravity. The Rubin Observatory and its legacy survey of space and time is going to be able to teach us more about dark matter by making a map of 20 billion galaxies in the universe, over half the sky. This map will not only tell us where the galaxies are in the universe, but using a technique called gravitational lensing, which actually distorts the light from very distant objects, it will actually enable us to make a map of where all of the matter is in the universe, whether or not it emits light. We have other ways that Rubin Observatory will teach us about the nature of dark matter. One of the ones that I'm most excited about is that the Rubin Observatory should detect a whole bunch of very, very tiny galaxies. These are galaxies that have merely a hundred stars, but they live in dark matter clumps that are a billion times the mass of the sun. These tiny galaxies can provide us clues not only to where dark matter is, but how it behaves, how it moves, and that might provide new clues to tell us what particle the dark matter is. So putting together these different pieces of the puzzle, the Rubin Observatory will really provide new clues to the nature of dark matter and to the entire universe that we live in.